I'll be honest, I'm not expecting too much of an audience for this video considering everybody's probably busy playing uh, Black and White 2, so, such as I am, but I'm still taking a break uh, from that to play this. Uh, <laughs> though it's, it's gonna be a bit awkward playing two Pokemon games at the same time, one for exploration purposes and another one for LPing purposes. I mean, uh, I, it, it's probably going to get to the point where I'm going to go, I'm going to reach out for the wrong Pokemon, a Pokemon I don't even have on my team because I'm not in the right playthrough. So if you see some mistakes in the next few videos, that's probably going to be why, though, I'm going to uh, make my best to remember which game I am playing right now. Black and White 2, uh, my first impressions, pretty good game. It's, um... At least when you get to Castalia, it really starts getting that feel of a deluxe version, especially since some NPCs say uh, the exact same lines as in the first game, which is really awkward, I mean. Um, they've had two years to learn some new sentences, and it, they didn't take advantage of the situation, like what? And... You know I've been really lucky catching Virizion, but I've also had insane luck in uh, uh, White 2 thus far. I have had an Adamant Tepig on my first try, which doesn't really matter much because I've already ditched it. But still, Adamant Tepig on my first try, no need for resetting or any of that crap. And Adamant Drillbur on my first try as well. Well, it took like two dust clouds for me to get one. And the first one gave me a red shard and... Oh, great! The Fail Blast TM! One, <laughs> uh, according to Smogon, one of the worst moves in the game, if not the worst. Well, it's uh, jokingly referred to as such, but it's through, through that other than, than Focus Blast there is simply no other commonly used offensive move below 80 accuracy that's commonly used in the in the Pokemon metagame. I mean, sure, there's Thunder and Blizzard, depending on the weather, but the Focus Blast has a 70 accuracy always. It's stuck with that. So, yeah, some people try to avoid using it whenever they can for very obvious reason because a miss can be particularly crucial. But at the same time, 120 power, not too bad for such a move. But still, 70 accuracy is a major turnoff to such an extent that many nasty plot Infernapes will use close combat instead of focus blast, even though close combat, of course, is not affected by Nasty Plot, though it also has the added adv advantage of being a pretty good deterrent for Chansey and Blissey. Um, how... I picked up that item in that uh, little uh, ledge near the water there, so why is my... Why is my uh, dowsing machine still pinging? I'm gonna need to check that, because, um... Wow, this is puzzling. So, oh, there was an item there. How did I not pick that up on my first time through? Oh, I guess because I thought it was the other item that was right next to it, but on the ledge below that was pinging. So that's probably what happened. So we're about to make our escape from uh, Wellspring Cave. And uh, I was just talking about my luck in Black and White 2. Uh, it's uh, sort of been compensated by the fact that my usual rotten luck with static continued to kick in whenever I encountered an Elekid in the Verbank complex. I always just assumed, you know, I'm gonna end this battle paralyzed because, well, all I had at the time was a pig knight with nothing but physical contact moves. So, we are now down with Wellspring Cave. Only one area left to check out before moving on with the main story. And that's the worst of all of them, unfortunately. So I'm just going to swap my Deerling for my Ducklet. Here we go, so at least I can fly back to a, back to a whichever town I feel like, probably Miss Troughton, when I'm done with uh, that area. Virizion's going to go in the lead because we're heading into a sea route, so it's going to be uh, beneficial in that area, and I, I need to uh, train Virizion some because it's only level 42 and it, uh, and it has uh, no EVs to speak of. Now, uh, the odd thing about uh, routes 17 and 18 is that on the map, they look like they connect to um, 
Nuvima Town. However, they do not. The way it works is that they actually connect to Route 1 right here. But then the route... Uh, oh, wow, there there is a, an annulation glitch here. Guess I'm going to have to uh, look into it once this recording's over. I think I have an idea of what's causing it, though. It happened to me in the past. It's like a, a setting that... Um, that... Uh, that changes on its own without asking for my permission. Maybe it's just a... Maybe I just a hit a hit the wrong button that's actually a hotkey for that setting or something. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm gonna look into that once this recording's over. So yeah, what happens is that this path immediately arcs back down to uh, the latitude of uh, Nuvima Town, hence why it looks that way on the map. Now! We are still on Route 1, as you can tell by the music. However, in this area of Route 1, there's nothing but doubles grass. And in this area, uh, the, the doubles grass uh, yields much higher level Pokémon than the singles grass. I mean, this is true in just about every place in Generation 5, but here more so, because in the regular grass you get Pokémon uh, that are levels 2, 3, or 4, but here they are in the in the low 30s. So just to give you an idea of, of, you know, why we didn't see some doubles grass in this area before, well, this is why they kept it for this part of the route in order to be able to implement a part of Route 1 where the wild, le wild Pokemon levels are more decent. And... Uh, uh, looks like I lied when I said this arrow was going to be benefit the Arisgon. And quadruple weakness stabbed Air Slash did not come even close to killing that Virizion. So remember when I was talking about its obscene special survivability? Well, this is an example of that. It was left alive with over a third of its health remaining, and it was a quadruple damage. No, six times the damage because of stab. And it still lived with room to spare. So, yeah, don't... It, it, don't I, I've had a few people telling me that they expected me to use Terrakion instead because uh, of its offensive prowess, but... No, don't don't uh, don't sell Virizion too short because otherwise uh, you're gonna see what just happened there. And I'll remind you that this was done with barely any EVs whatsoever. I mean, I didn't Audino grind that thing, and the typical result of Audino grinding is that your Pokemon is gonna end up with quite a few HP EVs. But Virizion had none of that. Came at level 42, which is what, which was just a few levels behind my party. So there's really no need to uh, Audino grind that thing, especially when uh, the highest Audinos you can find at that point in the game are in the are in the high 20s. So yeah. So, uh, now, last time I was talking about aquatic Pokemon. Uh, there was one that I hadn't reviewed yet, and it's probably the one that the most people uh, anticipated me to talk about. Alola, Alola, I always have problems and uh, pronouncing that name. Alomomola. God. Uh, I'll be honest, and uh, you probably remember it from my earlier LPs. When we first saw it, we thought instantly, love disc evolution, love this. Arguably the biggest joke in Pokemon, and uh, the second worst fully evolved Pokemon next to Unknown was actually going to evolve. Unfortunately, that didn't th turn out to be the case because they made uh, this into a complete blank slate. You know, Generation 5, there are no... Oh, come on! I just had to walk through one of these uh, grass tiles and I ran into something. Yeah, the aggravating encounter raid that we're about to meet on Route 17. Well, we're having sort of a preview here. But, yeah, Loma Mola, there's simply no reason why it shouldn't have been a uh, love disc evolution. Maybe uh, maybe they could have designed it so that it requires an item that can only be found uh, in the post-game, you know, to breed love disc or have love disc evolve into a Loma Mola. Something so that a Loma Mola would be attainable uh, in the main game, but not love disc, if you get what I'm saying. This might be a little complicated, but um, I understand what I'm saying. That's the important thing. 
So, yeah, some people say that this shouldn't be a love disc evolution because it's not the same species. To that, I say, BULLSHIT! In the past, we've had a Remora evolve into an octopus. We've had a Piranha evolve into a shark. We've had Weed evolve into a Rathlesia, or Rathlesia, or however you're supposed to pronounce that. But, so, yeah, there is simply no excuse for a discus fish to not evolve into a sunfish. Put Love Disc and Alomomola next to each other. They're practically identical. It's just that Alomomola has those little things uh, uh, on it. But otherwise, there, there's just no reason why they shouldn't have done this. And uh, this comes back to sort of my theory about Sigilith that... Uh, uh, I, I think that it may have been planned to have been an unknown evolution at some point, but they decided to scrap the idea once they decided that this game was going to be a sort of a reboot of the series, in a way. And as for its battle prowess, well, Alomomola isn't quite the complete joke as uh, Love Disc was. In fact, I believe Alomomola is uh, quite the powerhouse in the never-used metagame, but that's pretty telling of what uh, Alomomola can do. It, it needs the 200 or so best Pokémon out of the way in order to be able to perform to an acceptable degree. So, yeah, not very good. Its stats are, well, it's got acceptable attack, not quite as much as I would like. It's got so much freaking HP, but its defenses are a bit lacking, especially its special defense. And in terms of move pool, no. Just no. It, 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 it's, just, it's just not worth using unless uh, you're playing the lower tiers, and even there, the, the only lower tier that I could recommend it in is in Never Use, because, well, it's the lowest tier of all. But uh, r regardless, I don't play the lower tiers anyway, so I'm not fully informed of uh, how and why Lomomola can be so good there. So I'm just going to stop talking for now. I'm talking about the, the higher metagames where Lomomola is just absolutely worthless. Now, I think this was the last trainer in this area, so uh, the dowsing machine was pinging down there, so of course this seems like a suspicious place to put an item. Oh, there's a visible one on top of the invisible one. So, um, wait, what? Oh, it's in the tree, right, okay, big mushroom. So, yeah, we are now heading over to Route 17 through this toll booth, uh, which is apparently non-functional. <laughs> So yeah, Route 17, my most hated area in all of Pokemon because of the Whirlpool mazes. You may remember them from the path from Pacific Log to Slateport in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, but here it's been amped up a notch because it's much more, it's much more of a complicated maze. Uh, I am going to be using a map, as I said before, in order to not waste your time as much as I could if I was doing this blind. But just look at the map. This is a complete mess. Well, I, I know you can't see the map, but still, a mess. A total and complete mess. So yeah, this is my most hated area in all of Pokemon, and one, and it's probably in my top five in uh, all the games I've played, too. So, question of the day, and uh, it's been a while since I've had one of these. Question of the day. Actually, this is two questions for the price of one. Which is your least favorite area in a Pokemon game? And which is your least favorite area in any game ever? My personal answer would probably be a uh, Lothian Gorge from uh, Tales of Symphonia. I mean, those bubble puzzles, they're just, oh my god, every time, and I want, and I want to explore that place 100%, so that involves lots of backtracking and failing miserably at these puzzles, and, um, I guess, I guess this would, I, if I had any editing know-how, this is where I would have a clip, uh, playing in the background of the Nostalgia Critic screaming, FUCKING BUBBLES! Because this would be completely appropriate. So fortunately, we're running out of time, so I won't have to get into that maze this time, but next time, oh, next time, you are going to see what happens when you combine maddening encounter rates with ridiculous puzzles that are really hard to solve, unless you have a map.